Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, good afternoon and regards to our respectful attendees. Um, our honorable guest lecturer, Dr. Saleh Jani from Pamliko Community College. Our honorable dean of faculty of dentistry, Universi Universitas Pajajaran, Dr. Dudi Aripin, Dr. Gigi, specialist konservasi gigi. Um, and then the vice dean of the human resources, Dr. Dr. Gigi Endang Shamsuddin. And then um, also honorable mentions to head of the Department of Oral Maxillofacial Surgery, Professor Dr. Dr. Gigi Yez Harmas Yez Harmas Yezid Yusuf, Specialist Bedah Food and Staff. And also the honorable mention to the International Office of the Faculty of Dentistry Universitas Pajajaran, Dr. Zakiawati, um, Master of Science Specialist Penyakit Mulut and all the office staff. And, for, and the foremost is for all the faculty members and students present, as well as the students at Zoom meeting. And I would like to welcome all the participants to the lecture, which will be delivered by Dr. Jan, Dr. Saleh Jani from the Pamliko Community College about surgical management of the temporomandibular joint ankylosis. I would also like to thank everyone in here for making some room to attend this hybrid meeting. Uh, before we allow, let me introduce myself. My name is Nabila. I will be your master of ceremony for today's agenda. Before we start our meeting, let us pray to our God Almighty and praying starts now. Um, Prince enough. Now we shall continue to our next agenda. Um, before, before moving on to the, the discussions with Dr. Johnny, I would like to tell you some of the ground rules that apply in this meeting. First, all the participants that attend this class have to attend the class from the start to, um, to the end and fill the attendance form that will be provided in the chat box. And also please mute your microphone during the lecture and do not use the chat box during the lecture unless it is discussion sessions and you would like to ask questions. And please turn on your camera and use the provided virtual background. You can turn off your camera if you're in distracted public spaces. And if any of the participants would like to ask questions, please write your questions in the chat box and then the questions will be delivered by the moderator. Or you can click the right hand button and after the lecture and the moderator will as well call you and you can ask your questions directly. And as the additional information, I hope all the participants in here would like to give their full consent as this meeting is recorded and live streamed um, as it part of the documentation process. Well, professors, doctors and participants on these occasions, let me brief you um, today's agenda. The first is the Opening remarks from our Dean, uh, Dr. Dr. Gigi Dudi Aripin, Specialist Conservasi Gigi Consultant. And then the second agenda, we will have a lecture by Dr. Saleh Jani about the surgical management of the temporomandibular joint ankylosis and will be moderated by Dr. Indah Hadi Krishna, Dr. Gigi Specialist Bedah Mulut Consultant. And moving on, we will have discussion sessions. And last but not least, we will have awarding of the certificates. And now we are going to sing Indonesia, Indona, Indonesia National Anthem and Hymn of the Universitas Pajajaran. To all participants in the auditorium, please stand as we sing.
Everyone may be seated. And moving on to our next agenda, I would like to invite on Dr. Dodi Aripin, Dr. Gigi Specialist Konservasi Gigi, as the Dean of the Faculty of Dentistry, Universitas Pajajaran. Um, doctors, are you there? Yes, Ms. Nabila, thank you. Um, doctors and participants, please welcome Dr. Dr. Dodi Aripin, Dr. Gigi Specialist Konservasi Gigi Konsultan. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm very pleased today to welcome our honorable guest from Pomlico Community College, Dr. Saleh Jani. It is a pleasure to see you, doctor. I also welcome the faculty official, our vice dean of academic Yeah, sorry. Hello. I can hear you loud and clear. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I repeat again. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, everyone. I am very pleased today to welcome our honorable guest from Pomlico Community College, Dr. Salejani. It is a pleasure to see you, Doctor. I also welcome the faculty official, our vice dean of academic research, student affairs and alumni, Dr. Sri Susilawati, vice dean of human resource, Dr. Ndang Samsudin, our manager the head of the international office, Dr. Jakia and Tim, the respectable head of the Department of Oral Maxillofacial Surgery, Professor Dr. Harmas Yusuf Yassin, Dr. Gigi SPBM Consultant, to our moderator, Dr. Indra Hadi Krishna, SPBM Consultant, and of course, all our beloved student, lecturer, and staff. On this sunny Friday afternoon, or midnight in US, Dr. Jenny from Pamlico Community College, North Carolina, USA, will deliver a talk on surgical management of temporomandibular joint ankylosis. I was ready to welcome and greet Dr. Jenny in person when knowing that he will visit us today. However, I am grateful that despite the obstacle, Dr. Jani is still able to deliver his talk online late night from his hometown. Ladies and gentlemen, the pre prevalence of PMG involvement may not be uncommon, but is onset fear to be insidious, especially in our dental hospital. Patients with TMG involvement tend to be from other egg groups and usually have more joint disease, which will rise to few symptom, symptoms such as pain and stiffness of jaw movement. When ankylosis present, it will be causing problem with mastication, digestion, speech appearance, and it can also impact on physiological aspect of the patient. Today, we we will hear more about the surgical treatment of this condition from our guest lecturer, Dr. Jani. Professor, doctor, and fellow student, that's all from me. Without further ado, I welcome you once again and hope you will explore and gain more knowledge from the lecturer. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. 
Thank you very much, Dr. Dudi Aripin, for the opening remarks. And before we move on to our main agenda, I would like to ask all the attendees in Zoom meeting to open your cameras for documentation purpose. The operator will help to take the pictures. Um, yeah, Pak San, uh, Bu Santi atau, uh, or Pak Heri, are you ready? Okay. And I will lead the, com uh, the command. Is everyone ready? Three, two, one. Okay. Okay, moving on to our, our main agenda is the lecture that we all been waiting for. And it is about the surgical management of the temporomandibular joint ankylosis by Dr. Jenny with Dr. Indra as the moderator. Before we proceed, let me read the background of Dr. Indra Hadi Krishna. Well, Dr. Indra completed his uh, dentistry preclinical and clinical study in the Universitas Pajajaran, and then he continued his study in oral maxillofacial surgery specialty uh, and completed it in 2018. And uh, Dr. In the recent professional experiences on dentist as well as the lecturer at the Faculty of Dentistry Universitas Pajajaran. Dr. Indra published a lot of articles that are internationally published in reputable academic journals in the past three years. And um, we're not going to wait for long. And to proceed the main agenda, please welcome Dr. Indra Hadi Krishna, Specialist Bidhamut Consultant to the main stage. Doctor, the stage is yours. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, uh, Master of Ceremony, for uh, your kind introduction for me. And then uh, continuing to the next session. First of all, I would like to thank you for the Dean, Dr. Dudi Arifin, uh, specialized, specialized Conservancy, and uh, the Vice Dean of Human Resources that uh, being on the floor today, Dr. Endang Samshuddin and Dr. Sri Susilawati as Vice Dean of uh, uh, Academics for attending uh, uh, through online session. And then, uh, uh, I won't forget my beloved friend, my uh, Dr. David Zakiwati, for making this happen. And then, uh, before we continue to the next session, I would like to introduce our guest speaker today, uh, our honorable Dr. Saleh Jani, uh, for the operator. Can we see the... Okay. Dr. Saleh Jani was... Uh, from Public Co University, uh, North Carolina, US, United States. Uh, he was uh, a lecturer there, and then he was uh, he is consultated in laser therapy and then uh, oral surgery. Uh, it was our honor to list Dr. Salajani for um, his willingness to uh, give uh, to share his knowledge with us, or Dr. Salajani, the floor is yours. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for coming. My name is Dr. Salah Jani. I'm an, uh, or, dentist and oral maxillofacial surgeon, a laser specialist. Uh, I have Master of Public Health from George Washington University and uh, have a degree from uh, the, in the dental implant for NYU and currently teaching at Hamilton Community College for digital dentistry and dental technology now. Thank you for coming. Uh, I will start sharing my lectures about temporal mandibular joint uh, ankylosis. Uh, everybody can see this? Let me know. Thank you. Yeah, we can see your presentation, Doctor. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, so we're talking about the surgical management of uh, TMJ in general. 
Uh, I have uh, about 15 cases. With, I can share it with you and uh, uh, how we manage these cases. So ankylosis is it's, it's, uh, it's that it's, it's limitation of the movement. Uh, we cannot move your mouth, uh, maybe because of the fibrous or uh, cause uh, you know, bony ankylosis. Rowan in 1983 classified, classified uh, limitation of mouth mobility to number one, trismus, which is uh, this is muscle spasm, pseudoankylosis, mechanical interference uh, that prevent movement of the mouth, uh, false ankylosis, which is mostly extracapsular, like uh, fibrosis of, of the muscle around it. True and true, really true ankylosis is intracapsular, which is the real bony joint between the uh, the uh, the two parts of the of the TNJ. Uh, the <clears throat> the trismus has uh, many causes. The most common cause is odontogenic infection, wisdom teeth. When the wisdom teeth doesn't uh, have to, a space for to interrupt, they get infected, and the infection goes to the nearby uh, muscle, like uh, masseter or uh, the medial pterygoid muscle, and they lead to spasm of the muscle and cause trismus in general. So infection, periodontal disease is very rare, but it can be transmitted to the to the muscle and the muscle can get spasm. Traumatic fracture mandible will be painful to move the mandible and cause neoplasm, any any cancer in the joint or uh, <clears throat> on the floor of the mouth. Uh, medication, some uh, phenothiazide can cause uh, trismus. Uh, historical trismus, I've seen some cases, uh, some women have the stress and they can so much stress they cannot open their mouth. Tetanus, which is uh, the name came from uh, Trismus, came from tetanus. Uh, neurological, sometimes there's a brain injury or something can lead to that too. Cedo uh, ankylosis, which is like fake uh, ankylosis, basically called trauma, like fracture of the zygomatic arch. Zygomatic arch will fall on the on the coronoid process and prevent. The opening of the mouth, sometimes hyperplasia of the coronoid process and uh, <clears throat> prevent the movement of the of the mouth opening. Neoplasm and uh, chondroma, osteoma of the mandible or the joint of the glenoid fossa in general can cause the limitation of mouth opening. And sometimes uh, uh, inflammation around the area of the DMJ can cause also limitation and ankylosis. Uh, Extracapsular can cause uh, something about the uh, uh, can cause fib uh, fibrosis around the around the joint, uh, chronic dislocation and the uh, longer duration. Sometimes there's a treatment they inject some material around the capsule of the uh, false treatment for the joint and can cause limitation. Infection can cause uh, periodic infection. TMJ is, is well protected area, so the infection to that area is very rare, unless it's a penetration or from the from the ear infection come around it, or um, or infection can transmit it through blood, which is very rare. Uh, and again, um, tumor can cause uh, pseudoankylosis. Radiation, radiation can cause the fibrosis around the tissue, fibrosis of the muscle, fibrosis of the ligament around the joint. All these can cause the ankylosis of pseudoankylosis. <clears throat> While the true ankylosis, I most of my cases I've seen the trauma. Trauma is is, uh, is the most common cause of ankylosis. Uh, children under under nine, they have very vascular uh, head of condyle. So when they fracture, the child will fall on their chin. They cause a fracture of the one side of the uh, of the coronoid. Sometimes it will fracture and displace. And they usually they live in the rural area. They go to the local pharmacy. They give them some pain medicine, and, uh, and there's really fracture. And if it's too painful for the child to open their mouth, there will be bleeding inside the capsule. The bleeding causes hematoma. Hematoma will, and the child don't open their mouth. They will lead to fibrosis, and fibrosis will end to generate ankylosis. So sometimes, if you can save the patient. Uh, when you find we diagnose uh, that the, the fracture early, because sometimes the fracture sign of fracture there's not just pain in the area, and they leave it, they just give it some pain medicine and something, and and might uh, 
and might continue to become ankylosis. Uh, infection. I have just one case uh, it was infected uh, to infection, which external infection and later with ankylosis. Uh, some some general uh, joint uh, cent uh, general joint diseases can cause ankylosis. A tumor again can cause that. And this is very rare. Chondromatosis is very rare. Uh, never seen cases. I just see it in the uh, in the in the reference. So why we treat uh, uh, temporal mandibular joint ankylosis? The TMJ is very vital structure, and and, and uh, it's without the joint, it's very unique joint because it has two joints. They have to work together, and the joint, the TMJ, is one of the source of growth of the mandible. If one side is destroyed, the other side will continue to grow. So there will be deviation of the of the face. The patient there will be disfigurement. Uh, the condyle also when it's grown to grow the mandible. So one side will grow, the others will not growing, so it will be deviation. So the most important thing uh, to, uh, to, to create a good growth. Also, the patient cannot open their mouth. They cannot eat probably. They cannot breathe over probably. They have disease, they have abscess in their teeth. They cannot be treated. Uh, that's the important why to, to let's establish the joint movement and jaw function back. And other thing, prevent relapse. Unfortunately, there is more chance of relapse because of uh, because any trauma to the joint, and you do surgery to it, there's a chance of relapse. You need the physiotherapy, you need the cooperation of the patient, you need the management, you need to tell them why they need that, and you show them the procedure, and you have to need to spend a lot of time with your patient. You keep contact with them because it's an, a matter of growth, especially with their children. You need to contact them every month, every few weeks, and to and look at them and give them an appointment to see them again and again. So the growth is the important growth, especially the younger children, you have to monitor their growth and they might need further surgeries and they might need further, uh, further interference. But this is a just general anatomy of the TNJ. <clears throat> TMJ is very unique. I told you it's a, uh, it has a, a lower part, which is the condyle. And there is a, the disc here. And this is the base of the skull or <clears throat> temporal bone. This is the glenoid fossa. And, uh, and it's, it's very delicate. This has synovial fluid in, inside and have a lower compartment and upper compartment in general. And uh, this is the capsule it's covered. The, the, the mandible in general is suspended by ligament and muscles. I keep telling my patient, uh, my student, the mandible is, is suspended uh, bone is not attached only with, with attached to the skull by, by muscle and ligament and then by teeth. And so when they lose the teeth, that's very important. When they lose the teeth, we need to reestablish that relation between the base of the skull. That's why we need the centrical relation and so this uh, so be careful when you extract wisdom teeth don't make damage to the to these capsules and ligaments we have we have sphenomandibular ligament will be the inner side of the mandible with stylomandibular ligament to the standard process it's in the back of the mandible in some posterior part this is the inner side this is the tmj uh, tmj capsule and this is the sphenomandibular ligament this is the stylomandibular ligament the stylum mandibular ligament attached to the to the corner of the to the angle of the mandible. Here, the sphenoid mandible around the when you give the injection for a inferior dental uh, nerve. So this is so sometimes <clears throat> when you some people when they give them anesthesia, sometimes they they make damage to that sphenoid mandibular ligament. And after they they did dental work, they couldn't open their mouth. That's one of the cause of damaging to the sphenoid mandibular ligament because they get inflamed by a dental injection. This is another picture of the the <clears throat> the lateral thyroid muscle. Uh, one day we can talk about the lateral thyroid muscle. The lateral thyroid muscle is a very big big deal because technically one of the new articles that's a lateral thyroid muscle actually it's two muscles. They are superior head and inferior head. They have different different uh, different functions. Uh, one of them controlling the disc. The other one controlling the head of the condyle. And and there is there is discrepancy uh, discrepancy in the work of the lateral thyroid muscle. It can lead to TNJ problem, and hopefully one day we can talk about that too. <clears throat> oh, there is anatomical structure very important when you do any surgery to the joint. 
there, there is a facial nerve. Facial nerve is very important nerve, and it cannot damage the facial nerve. And this is the facial nerve will be located here. <clears throat> this is the facial nerve. Have five branches. Very important nerve. Uh, the other, other important uh, tissue, important structure is the maxillary artery. Maxillary artery. This is <clears throat> middle managerial artery, and we have mandibular nerve, branch of, ma of the trigeminal nerve. Uh, this structure will be medial, me, uh, medial side or the inner side to the TMJ. So when you do any surgery, to be careful not to damage all these visal structure. Infratemporal fossa, if you remember the anatomy, it's a very, very big. There is a lot of structure here in infratemporal fossa. So just be careful when you do any surgery to the TMJ. Be careful to these vital structure. I want to show you this, my patients, and how uh, I have 15 patients. The, the younger they are, they have uh, better success. The older they are, they, they have less, less uh, success with the treatment. They have limitation. Uh, most of my patients, they have trauma, trauma, trauma. Uh, I have just one patient had infection, uh, and she had limitation uh, ankylosis for 15 years. Uh, most of them back like three years, some of them at 10 years uh, have ankylosis. They couldn't open their mouth. Uh, and I, when I was I was working in Iraq, although they are from around Iraq, I will show you the. This is, this is Iraq, and this is my this is the where is my patient. Some of them from Baghdad, Samarra, Kirkuk, uh, some of them Basra, all the all over Iraq. This is a jab from Baghdad. <clears throat> Can you see the deviation of the mandible? When one joint doesn't work, the other one will still grow. That's why they will have the chin will be deviated. This is Salar from Erbil. Can you see? This is the normal side. Continue grow that. This is the ankylos part. Will go like this. Uh, so can you see? This is very obvious facial deformity when you have ankylosis. Uh, so when we do surgery, there's many things we have to do. Uh, take care of the patient. We have to make sure they have the <clears throat> the right the, uh, hemoglobin. They have the right X-rays. Uh, they have uh, blood. We need the blood because there was a bleeding chance. And we have to admit them uh, 24 hours before operation. We have to get the consent form. Uh, they have to sign it from them or for their younger from the parent. This is one of the X-rays. I will show you. This is better CT scan. <clears throat> So this is the normal joint. If you can see, this is the normal joint. This is the TMJ. There is a gap. This is a space between it and, and the temporal bone and glenoid fossa. Well, this is, you can see, there's real ankylosis. There's real bone formation. Attachment between the glenoid fossa, temporal bone, and the, uh, and the mandible. So this is a cross-section through the head. You can see there's real ankylosis. There's attachment between the mandible and the base of the skull or the temporal bone. I have 3D <clears throat> CT scan. This is 3D CT scan. This is the normal joint. There's a gap. You can see the space. You can see the normal space. Uh, this is the normal joint. This is the fuse attack. This is real fusion between the mandible and this is the temporal bone in general and zygomatic arch in general later. But this is this is the fusion. You can see it. This is the ankylosis joint. This is non ankylosis joint. This is another picture. You can see how much is ankylosed. Yeah. So there's, a, there's challenges when you're working with the temporal mandibular joint ankylosis. Uh, anesthesia, one of them, the, because we need to intubate the patient. Most of the anesthesiology, they open their mouth, they put the tube inside the mouth, and they do intubation. Because our patient with ankylosis, they cannot open their mouth. They have uh, ankylosis. That will be very challenging for the anesthesia. So we need expert anesthesiologists to go through the nose and without seeing the tube, and they have to find, they go to the trachea. They cannot go to the, to the esophagus. That's what is very challenging. So you need a good uh, anesthesiologist to find the, for intubation. Position, position of the patient is very important because especially when you work with the bilateral ankylosis, uh, you have to keep changing the patient uh, position, shaving, and you have this, uh, skin disinfecting and driving all these uh, important. 
So this is the final position of the patient. That's who, after intubation, they have to go through the nose to the, to the trachea. And we shave all this area around the ear and uh, on the head. <clears throat> Other thing when we dissect, we have to, uh, we need a big space. When we, uh, we need the big surgeon, make big incision. We need a big incision to access the temporal mandible because it's very crowded area. There's a lot of structure there. So we're not, we're not trying to damage any other tissue. So we, as big as your flap, it's better for you. But uh, as long as you're not damaging any vital structure there. So there's this question mark incision. Uh, sometimes they call it pre auricular or extended pre auricular incision. So just avoiding <clears throat> the superficial temporal arteries and try to avoid the facial nerve and to cut that. And you can you keep your dissection in the temporalis fascia. You know, temporalis has a very big, big fascia. And if you go in the fascia without that, you're not going to damage the, the facial nerve. Uh, that's a, called the question mark incision. So when we dissect, this is the question mark incision. This is the ear, you can see. And this is the first incision we're gonna pre-auricular and then we extend it all the way to the temporalis. And we expose, this is the fused joint. This is, this is the temporal bone, this is the agomatic arch, and this is the mandible. They are fused together. So it's a lot of bleeding in this area. This area is very vascular, so you have to stop a lot of bleeding here, here, here. So I have to stop the bleeding to see where's the bone and where's the fusion there. So this is the, uh, the we find this is ankylosed part. So there's many treatment for it, for when, when you have ankylosis of uh, the TNG. We, uh, so you can cut the, the, uh, the, the ankylos part, you make space between the base of the skull and the mandible, and they call and make a gap. And the surgery called gap erythroplasty. Erythroplasty, any surgery uh, of the joint. So we did this surgery and we, we did the gap, but we find there is a lot of uh, relapse because of that because there will be bleeding again and the patient will be painful and cannot move their mouth, will, will have pain. Uh, they will have a bleeding again and fibrosis and we have a chance of, of recurrence of re-ankylosis. Uh, sometimes we replace it, then we make a, a fake joint from chrome cobalt or sometimes we use a rib. We use a rib from the uh, opposite side and take the shape of the mandible and we screw it with the remaining of the mandible and make, like we created like a, joint, uh, but uh, we saw that uh, uh, and we screw it, we Okay. Uh, sorry for your inconvenience. Uh, maybe we have uh, technical problems. Uh, we wait for the connection to be established. So maybe we can, uh, while we uh, waiting for the connection to be established, uh, maybe some you can start to write down something for the next uh, question and answer session. Uh, we ha we are glad to invite you and in the question and answer session. Maybe and start writing it right now. Thank you. Uh, sorry, I was like, did, uh, sorry, I, the connection is disconnected. Can you hear me now? Okay, Dr. loud and clear. Yeah, sorry, wh which slide you you, uh, you were? Uh, let me know which slide uh, I, you lost me. The slide, uh, I'm talking about the enclosures or section, section, this. This one? Okay. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> so this is after we remove the, we remove the, the ankylos part. 
usually we use a temporalis muscle flap. Temporalis muscle flap, we're gonna keep a real vital tissue with, with their nerve supply and blood supply at interposition between the mandible and the base of the skull. And it will prevent re -ankylosis. It has a lot of success. Temporalis muscle, a very big muscle and strong muscle, and, and it's a blood supply and uh, nerve supply has come from this area, from infratemporal uh, fossa. So we're not gonna damage the, uh, the blood supply or nerve supply. So if we're gonna, gonna strip, we're gonna take a strip of the temporalis muscle and uh, uh, interposition it between the remaining of the mandible and the, and the base of the skull, we can create, uh, we can prevent re -ankylosis. And that's why we have a lot of success in doing this. Uh, this is the temporalis, <coughs> temporalis slip. We take it and, and we reinsert it inside the, and we interposition between the base of the skull and the mandible or the remaining of the mandible or the remaining of the ramus. And then we stitch it. And this is, I have, this is the, the OBG. This is the one, this is bilateral ankylosis. You can see this is the section, this section. The temporalis that they show because of soft tissue. And we use a drain and we do a lot of pressure and we use a drain. This is the question mark in, in Al Hayat and the Bromley incision. That's an extension of pre auricular incision. Uh, this is another case. This is Farha. She's from Momo. So she's been ankylosed for 10 years and she is, has bilateral ankylosis. And the younger patient, they have very successful uh, and very wide uh, uh, open mouth opening after the surgery. Uh, can you see this patient preoperative? He has crowding, he has bad teeth. They couldn't do any dental work because they couldn't open their mouth. Now we can do all these things. Uh, well, now they open their mouth. Uh, this patient, <clears throat> we did the surgery on him. But he's, he had uh, ankylosis for a very long time. Even the tissue around the face, like the muscle, the facial structure, become fibrous because they couldn't open them up. The tissue, if they, if, they, if they don't use them, they will get adapted to the new situation. So the younger they are, the early diagnosis of ankylosis can save the patient's uh, facial formality, fa function. So it's early, if you can diagnose on early treatment, it will be much better for, for the patient. This is preoperative and postoperative. Uh, this patient from Erbil, she, uh, see, they, because she couldn't open them out, they took her to the local nurse and they extract these front teeth just to let her eat. Yeah, so <laughs> that's a, like a much the disfigurement for her. And after surgery, we asked them to close their eyes, open their uh, eyes to see if there's a damage to the facial nerve. Well, so we, that's a, that's a, a one of the yeah, signs if they, they have damage to the facial nerve, they couldn't close their eyes. <clears throat> the most important treatment after, uh, after surgery is it's a physiotherapy, post-operative uh, you know, medication and physiotherapy. Physiotherapy is one of the most important uh, essential part of treatment uh, because we need to keep the area in uh, essential, uh, essential uh, activity. It should be active. And in Iraq at that time, uh, we use these uh, physiotherapies. Uh, you this as a as extending tissue. We can extend the tissue because it was, we're not working only on the joint because the tissue around it, like the muscle, the facial structure, the ligaments, all need to be stretched to the new position because they've been they've been stagnant in that position for many years. That's why we need the physiotherapy. We need this physiotherapy. Uh, but when I went to America, I saw all these things. All the, they have these advanced uh, uh, physiotherapy machines and uh, equipment. Uh, this is, uh, in summary, temporalis flap is efficient, efficient and very important because it's not for anybody. We don't have chance of infection. And the flap it has maintained its uh, viability, has the blood supply and nerve supply, and we have a lot of success with these uh, with this with this procedure, what is called interpositional erythroplasty. And, uh, but the physiotherapy should continue for at least six months to one year, and it's very important in, in our success. 
uh, I was working in Baghdad Medical City here, and uh, then I went to work. And uh, and uh, thank you for listening. I'm ready for any question. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Saljani. We can give Dr. Saljani a big applause for the presentation, and then uh, we can. Uh, the session, the next session is a uh, question and answer session or a discussion session. Maybe from the audience, uh, some of the audience may already have the questions. We are pleased to uh, invite the audience to give some questions or any experience in their, especially our vice dean of uh, Human resources, Dr. Ndang Samsudin is very concerned in this uh, type of cases like uh, temporal mandibular joint. He's a, a consultant in temporal mandibular joint. Maybe any residents or any students or pre postgraduate students, please. Uh, we can. We also invite the uh, Zoom, uh, the audience from the Zoom uh, room. If you want to give uh, to ask some questions, you can use the raise hands tools for or and write down the question in the chat in the chat section. Okay, uh, while we're waiting for the questions, uh, maybe I have uh, one question, Dr. Salijani. Yeah. Uh, the first question is, uh, you said that uh, early diagnostic is very important for the better prognostic. Uh, how we can uh, differentiate the uh, pseudo-onkylosis and the true onkylosis? Uh, what is the, mainly the clinical uh, symptoms, clinical appearance of the the difference between clinic uh, between the pseudo ankylosis and atau, uh, or a fibrous ankylosis and the true ankylosis or bony ankylosis. Thank you, Dr. Saleh, Jenny. Thank you very much. Uh, you know the uh, optimum uh, optimum is X-rays, CT scan. You can see where is the ankylosis. You can uh, with the, if you have CT scan, you can see it. Here. But you can clinically you can see if there is elongation of the of uh, coronoid process. You can put your finger on the cheek and you can see this, the coronoid process is very long. That will cause, it will trap in the zygomatic arch. That will cause uh, pseudoonkylosis. And also you can put your fingers on the joint, in the joint cavity and you can tell the patient open their mouth. It can, if they feel, uh, if you feel is smooth opening, that's normal. If there's, you feel a little bit of toughness or roughness, that fibrosis in the area. If you feel a crepitation of the like sound of cracking of something, that's the early the early sign of there is a bone formation in the area, and uh, and when it's really true ankylosis, the patient cannot open their mouth. There's no movement, like or zero movement. When it's it's a pseudo ankylosis, there is a, there's movement, there is mouth opening a little bit, and there's deviation. If it's uh, if it's due to elongation of the coronoid process, there is there is movement. But uh, true ankylosis, there is no movement at all, especially in, if it's bilateral. There is no movement and there is no mouth opening. But other cases, uh, pseudoonkylosis, there's fibrosis around the muscles or the tissue. There is movement because the tissue is, is, is stretchable. You can say, but once it's a, there is a bony ankylosis, there is no movement at all, zero. Thank you for your answer, uh, your clear answer, Dr. Saleh, uh, to Jenny. And then uh, maybe any audience, any questions? Okay. Okay. Uh, you can see from the chat box, Dr. Saleh. Yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you. There is more suggestion of the uh, if you, some surgeon they use just preauricular, but with experience you need a bigger area because. The more incision you have, you have less damage, especially if you want to take the, the some area from the temporalis muscle. So uh, this incision was uh, it's away from vital structure and it give you access to the temporal mandibular joint. 
uh, if you have other suggestion for other other uh, other decision, let me know. But this is the best decision we have uh, because it's away from the vital structure and it gives you bigger access to the area to the TMJ. Okay, we have uh, one more question from the chat box uh, from KSM Bedah Mulut LSIS. Oh, there's there's a question about did you total joint replacement in TMJ? There's there's cases uh, total replacement, but the when you replace the joint, you have to replace it with either chrome cobalt, which is for a body, and you have to screw it with the you know you have will be two parts. You have to uh, to make uh, you need screws to the glenoid faucet. Uh, make the upper part and uh, the lower part, but technically these gonna be foreign bodies, and it, it, like here place it can have, have a good success rate, uh, but at the time we didn't have it, uh, and it were expensive as compared. But uh, it's one of the option of treatment. But if they still foreign body, and you have chance of infection, and uh, as a as a, any foreign body it comes to the tissue. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Senator Jenny, for the answers. Any audience from the from this room? Okay, Doctor Endang, we are pleased to. Any? Can we have the microphone for Doctor Endang? Yeah, uh, Doctor Sarah, thank you for. Okay. Thank you. Uh, information with uh, ankylosis yeah treatment of an ankylosis uh, our experience will with temporal muscle interposition uh, sometimes will show a lump of book in the zygomatic arch area okay yeah uh, how to manage uh, uh, this case if uh, uh, so the bulk and arch zygomatic. You said that it said the will be bleeding or something in the zygomatic area uh, after the after position of the muscle. Yeah, maybe, maybe I can um, uh, interpret for you. Uh, Dr. Ndang uh, asked uh, if the ankylosis involving yeah. the zygomatic arch and we have a uh, uh, true ankylosis involving not only the the, the glenoid fossa but also the the zygomatic arch yeah. so what 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 should we do or what is the best option based on yeah. your your experience to remove yeah. uh, the, the ankylosis that involving the uh, zygomatic arch because it's in doctor and experience, maybe it's very difficult and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The ankylos, uh, uh, unfortunately, will grow in large and lower jaws. Sometimes it grows medially, or sometimes it go uh, anteriorly. So, go anteriorly, it will interfere even with the coronoid. So, if uh, you have to cut the all, the, you have to free the the ramus from the ankylosis from the from the base of skull, and also sometimes you have to cut the coronoid process. Not the condyle, also the coronoid process to free it. So you have to create all that, uh, you know, the, it, the real gap. You can see there is no attachment between the ramus and the and the base of skull or temporal or zygomatic arch. You have to remove them all. But the, unfortunately, uh, this success rate will be less because this patient would would have involvement. They have very long years to have ankylosis. And also for one question about the the uh, relapse after temporal uh, temporal temporalis muscle uh, uh, you know insertion, uh, it's it's physiotherapy is very important. Sometimes even with we can do everything for us and we do everything we can do uh, to uh, try to help. The, the surgery was perfect, everything was perfect, but the patient will not participate in physiotherapy, will not follow up the treatment. They may will have relapse. They will have relapse. Because it's a teamwork from the doctor, from the dentist, the speech therapist, or the, you might need orthognathic surgery in the future. So it's a teamwork, and the patient is very important part, or the family of the patient, if the patient is a child. 
the child, the, the younger they are, they have better success, but the patient has very important part of physiotherapy and treatment. Uh, that's uh, that's why the relapse is depends on uh, sometimes on the physiotherapy, not only surgery. Yeah, thank you. Hey, uh, thank you, Dr. Jenny, for the explanation. Uh, in the chat box, there's only questions and other Saleh. Okay, there's uh, one more question from the Zoom participant, the from Dr. Mitra Riswanda. Good afternoon, Dr. Saleh. Jenny, excuse me, I want to ask about the a lot of patients with ankylosis because of the trauma. Is there any relapse for using temporal muscle? Oh, you are already uh, answered it, doctor. Yeah. Uh, can I have some uh, one question for you, doctor Jenny? Yes. Yes. Uh, I I read from your CV that you are uh, interested in laser therapy, uh, and then. Uh, uh, Related, related to these uh, topics, there's, you said before that the uh, physiotherapy is uh, very important for the success of the, all of the therapy. So uh, can you share us about the use of laser in uh, post-operative physiotherapy? Uh, we are very glad if you want to share it a little bit, your experience with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I have a laser degree. Yes, I have a two years master of laser therapy. Uh, so there's a type of laser that could create uh, electromagnetic wave that relax the muscle. That's one, one uh, usually a diet laser, the, one of the diet laser. Uh, you know, a laser is a just concentrated light and it's have different wavelengths. So there's infrared uh, lasers, which is have, like CO2 laser have a high intensity, but it's in infrared region and uh, used for cutting. Uh, Sometimes uh, ultraviolet laser, they use it for eye surgery and they usually, uh, but the laser we use in physiotherapy, it has a low energy, but it will help in uh, its electromagnetic way will help in relaxing the muscle and the tissue, the skin around it, the area, PMJ. And you can use it for wisdom teeth to uh, promote healing too. One of the treatment is using laser as a uh, as a physiotherapy for muscle relaxant and tissue relaxant. I promote healing. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Jenny, for the answer. Uh, maybe in Indonesia, uh, the laser therapy is just emerging. So I think if you have, we if we have uh, the next chance for you to give us another lecture, maybe the topics. Maybe we'll you will share about the uh, the use of laser therapy in uh, dentistry, or maybe use of laser therapy in especially in oral maxillofacial vessel mm -hmm. surgery or in TMJ uh, disorder. Inshallah, inshallah. inshallah. Okay, uh, I think uh, are there any questions from the audience or from the uh, Zoom participant? Okay, uh, I think uh, there's no more question from the audience. Uh, uh, before we end this session, uh, let's us be, uh, give Dr. Salajini a big applause for this his interesting presentation and very uh, very good uh, presentation. Uh, thank you for, very much for Dr. Salajani for joining us and uh, willing to share your experience and your knowledge for with us. Thank you, Dr. Salajani. My pleasure. Thank you. It was very nice. Thank you. Salam alaikum. Uh, for the next session, I will return it to the Master of Ceremony for Ms. Nabila. Uh, Okay, thank you so thank you very much, Dr. Indra, and thank you very much, Dr. Jenny, for the insightful and fruitful lecture. Um, before before Dr. Jenny leave this room, we would like to invite all the participants to go to the main stage as we're going to take um, some of documentations. Uh, yeah, we, you guys are all welcome to come to the main stage for the picture sections. Dr. Jenny, are you still there?
Yes, thank you. I'm here. Thank you very much, everyone, and you may be seated now. And we would like to remind all the Zoom participants to keep your camera on as we're taking um, documentations as well in Zoom meeting. And as our token of appreciation, the Faculty of Dentistry Universitas Pajajaran would like to give you e-certificate for Dr. Jani and Dr. Indra. And the certificate will be handed by Dr. Dudi Aripin, Dr. Gigi Specialist Konservasi Gigi Konsultan, as the Dean of Faculty of Dentistry Universitas Pajajaran. Dr. Dudi, are you there? Uh, sorry, uh, yes, uh, thank you. Thank you, MC. Okay. Okay, uh, Dr. Zani, uh, thank you very much for excellent presentation today. On behalf of the faculty and the committee, I would like to express our gratitude to you for attending the meeting virtually from the USA to share your expertise with us. It is a compliment for us that you are talking a keen part of this event. This might be our first meeting, especially at an education event. However, I hope this event will also trigger further collaboration between the Faculty of Dentistry Universitas Pajajaran and Pomlico Community College. As a small to uh, token uh, of appreciation, we would like uh, to present uh, a certificate to you. Thank you, Dr. Salijani. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you, doctor. Please remain still while the operator is taking screenshots for the documentation's purpose. Uh, is it all set, uh, Pak Heri? Okay. Moving on, we're going to give the next certificate for Dr. Indra. Uh, yeah, Dr. Indra, please, you're welcome to the stage. Uh, Dr. Dudi, are you still there? Okay. Yes, I still. Thank you. Uh, furthermore, in this opportunity, I would like also thanks Dr. Indra, PBM consultant, for hosting our discussion with Dr. Salajani. We are glad to have you both today, and I am sure I saw many excited participants join the lecture and uh, discussion. We hope you enjoy this event as much as we did. And as a small token of appreciation, please accept the certificate. Thank you, Dr. Indra. Thank you very much, Dr. Dudi, for your okay. kindness. Thank you very much, Dr. Dudi, okay. for, um, for your time to give the certificates for both of the lectures and the moderators. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the awarding certificates mark our last agenda for today's meeting. But I hope everyone, 
I hope today's lecture will bring many benefits for the both parties, both for the University Pajajaran or for the Pamlico College, community college as well. And before um, we close this meeting, I would ring a bell to every participants to fill in the attendance forms that is provided in the chat box. Is it ready, uh, Businda? Okay. Um, well, then, without further ado, we shall close our today's agenda by reciting Hamdallah. And thank you for the honorable professors, doctors, and all the participants in this room for attending this lecture. And if there is any shortcomings or drawbacks that is um, with uh, that is occurred in this meeting, please send us your feedback for the future improvement. And that's all from us. Good afternoon. Have a nice day. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Dr. Salajani. Nice to meet you. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Thank you very much. See you next time. Thank you. Welcome to the Faculty of Dentistry, Universitas Pajajaran, with the concept of Smart and Green Dentistry. Faculty of Dentistry Universitas Pajajaran has two large campuses in the Jatinangor Educational Area and the Central Area of Bandung. Both are comfortable and safe areas with convenient access to transportation.